Before we dive into the activity ideas for 16 to 18 month olds, I wanted to remind you that these are just that, they're activity ideas. This is not a report card of how well Stella is doing, and it's not a report card of how well your child is doing. It's also not a reflection of anyone's parenting abilities. These are simply activity ideas that your child may be ready for and interested in around this age range. They may also be younger, they may be older, and they are certainly going to continue being interested in the activities in our previous videos as well. During this time in particular, we're going to be seeing such a drastic difference between what every child is interested in and working on that I really wanted to remind you not to compare anyone's abilities to this video. These discs on a horizontal dowel, for example, Stavla never actually became interested in, but somehow she developed this skill through other activities, and that is completely fine. That out of the way, one of the new activities that your child may be showing an interest in is role playing or pretend play. And I have a whole separate video on the importance of pretend play in the Montessori home, but overall this is an amazing way for children to continue practicing practical life skills as well as really play out those scenarios that are happening to them throughout the day. So Stella, for example, is incredibly interested in the whole toilet learning and diaper changing process right now and she's playing this out on some dolls because she doesn't have a younger sibling to care for. So this is the only way that she can really get to experience doing these activities on her own. Your child may also be very interested in pretend play cooking. It doesn't always need to be cooking an actual meal. There's only so many times you can cook throughout the day. Nor do you need a real pretend play kitchen for this. You can simply give them some of the pots and pans that you have laying around as well. Building materials are going to be a wonderful addition into that pretend play space as well. Now that our children's fine motor skills are a bit more refined, they're going to find the interest of putting things like Duplo blocks together because they can actually put the pieces together. This is also a great way to start talking about different colors or creating different things and showing your child how to build something like cars and planes from all these different materials is just as important as giving them some freedom to create on their own. Obviously, putting together just simple blocks is still going to be a very interesting and important concept for kids this age as well. It's still very difficult for them to balance several blocks together because it takes a lot of precise hand movement and finger movement, but allow your child to, at this point, interact with different shapes, different colors, different types of blocks, even really oddly shaped blocks like this set that we have here, allow for a lot of imaginative play and problem solving and trying to figure out all the different ways that you need to rotate these blocks to get them to fit just right. Magnetiles present a different kind of challenge and a different kind of imaginative play as well because now these blocks fit together, they're flat but they can also make 3D shapes and it allows for that extra level of creativity. You can also take them into the kitchen and stick them on the fridge door which allows your child to be immersed in something while you're cooking dinner for example. You can also make this a closed ended activity by presenting some kind of pattern for the child to follow. Around this time, your child may show an interest in color matching and understanding what the different colors are. We're going to start out first with the three primary colors, move on to secondary colors, and then progress from there. You can start this out very simply, just using some paint swatches or construction paper to match identical colors together. Then we will progress to matching items that are the identical color to paint swatches, or in this case, little nests and birds. And after that, we can progress to matching different shades of the same color. So for example, these bows are not the exact same shade as the plates that they're in, but because Stella has progressed in her abilities at this point, she's understanding this concept much better. There are a lot of wonderful activities that you can implement to do color matching. You can buy certain activities like this one, which work the pincer grasp and use tongs later, or you can DIY a lot of materials. I've also presented some on this channel. You can utilize activities that you already have, like these pegs in a pegboard. We're using them for color matching now. Now aside from color matching, your child will be interested in matching just about everything in this age. So we've got some different texture cards that we were matching. Obviously item to picture cards, especially animal to animal picture cards are going to be wonderful and very well loved by children at this age. And this is a wonderful way to also implement more language opportunities for the child as well. We can also start matching smelling jars. Traditionally smelling jars are opaque so the child has to guess what's inside. As a way to scaffold towards that, I first presented Stella with matching cards and she simply matched the jars to the cards and once she understood that the cards and the bottles need to match I covered the bottles and she could no longer see inside all that well so she really had to smell what was inside and match it to the cards and this way she was really honing in on using her sense of smell instead of just looking at what is inside the jar in order to make the correct match. 
progression from matching is sorting. So rather than identifying items that are the same or very similar, now we're separating them into different piles. I had presented this big versus small sorting activity back in my winter activities video. And since then, Stella has really grasped the concept and been very interested in sorting big and small. Screws, nuts and bolts, obviously larger ones, not the ones we use around the house, are going to be a wonderful addition at this age range. Gauge for when your child is actually ready for them and show an interest in them versus just being very frustrated. Stella didn't take to them until very recently, but she is now incredibly immersed in them. This is wonderful for really developing their hands, their fingers, as well as their wrist. You can see that wonderful wrist movement they have to do in order to really get the bolts and nuts off. This is an amazing way for them to get ready for future writing skills. Another classic that we didn't take to until just a little bit recently is lacing beads. This is an amazing activity for them to learn how to use both of their hands at the same time as well as continuing that pincer grasp. And you can see what really helped is me helping Stella pull the string out on the other side. Sometimes I just had to hover my hand over hers for a little bit of emotional support. But once she finally figured out a couple of them, she started practicing with different ways that she can get the lace inside of the bead. So it was really on her own terms and when she felt ready and now she doesn't mind what kind of bead it is she's just really happy to lace as many beads as she can all throughout the day another activity to revisit for that pincer grasp is this variation of posting with cards in a wallet not only are we working on taking them out now we can also try to work on putting them back in which also helps them work on different orientations and again problem solving a box with a sliding lid is another classic Montessori activity for this age. Ours also contains a puzzle on the inside, and this is different from the peg puzzles that Stella has been exposed to up until now. These are 3D little puzzles, and because it's so different, it's made working with puzzles more interesting for her all over again. You can see I had to add little colored dots on the back to help that control of error, but this puzzle also has different facial expressions for all the different bears. They've got items that she can either mix or match, so we can work on a lot of different skills all within this one simple puzzle. Another 3D puzzle that she's got is with these different animals and insects. And again, because they're 3D shapes, they're actually much more complicated. Sometimes I actually point the different parts so she can start to understand where the different pieces should go. Another option would be to actually print out the actual image and put it on the back. A peg puzzle that we've recently introduced is this one with noises. The noises are so incredibly realistic and Stella is really interested in making all the different animal noises that it's been an absolute hit. This shape sorting puzzle also lacks control of error, so I had to put on a first layer for Stella so there is something controlling what she's doing because otherwise the pieces can go in all sorts of different directions. But this is, again, a very, very early introduction to some numbers. We've got one, two, three, four, and five pegs. Again, sorting different shapes as well. We've got different colors, so she's also kind of color matching here. This is a very interesting puzzle for kids to work on, especially if they're getting tired of those peg puzzles. And speaking of shape sorters, your child may still be gravitating toward their shape sorters. They may still be working on figuring out how to get all the shapes in, or they may have finally clicked and figured out how to get all the shapes in, and that is what makes this activity now very exciting. They're no longer working through the problem solving stage, they're now enjoying that satisfaction of getting all the shapes in properly. So if your child continues to gravitate towards their shape sorters, definitely don't rotate them out just yet. If you're not new to my channel, this barn with latches will not surprise you. Latches are a wonderful way to again work on those fine motor skills. And this barn with latches specifically also allows for a lot of pretend play, open-ended play and language development. You can notice here we've also moved on to working with some keys. That house is more of an activity that Stella is allowed to play with independently. I also recently got this set of the locks and keys from Montessori and me and I was not planning on introducing it to Stella just yet but she saw me taking it out and she has been in love with it ever since. This is always an incredibly closely supervised activity for us. The different types of keys and the different locks are so beautiful and so incredibly enticing for her. This is also its own version of a shape sword and a different kind of puzzle and it's very interesting for her to try to get the locks just in and she's working on twisting and turning them much like we do with the different nuts and bolts. I also wanted to point out that your child may still be interested in some of their previous activities but in different ways. So we've got the stacking cubes as well as the matryoshka dolls and now we've started lining them up almost in the way that you would do with the brown stairs and the pink tower kind of associating big versus small. We're also starting hiding some pom-poms in there. So we're still able to repurpose a lot of the activities that we used when Stella was much younger and simply learn different concepts with them. 
The same goes for this ball tracker that we've had ever since Stella was nine months old. Now she's starting to really experiment with all the different things that can go in there. And that is the beauty of how simple some of these activities are. As our children grow, they find new and different ways to explore, experiment, and discover something new. Speaking of experimenting, if your little one hasn't tried experimenting with light just yet, I encourage you to give them some kind of toy that lights up or a little flashlight. We've got this little bunny that also serves as a little night light that's got stars and a moon on it. And Stella has recently become obsessed with trying to see all the different places that she can move the light to and how different it looks when it's up close versus far away. Now that it's darker outside for much longer periods of time, this is a great way to get outside if it's not terribly freezing out there. Take a flashlight and go on a lit walk if it's safe for you to do so. Or you can simply turn off the lights in the house like we did here and allow your child to explore all the different ways that light works. Obviously, we can't talk about experimenting and exploration without touching on different art forms. Whether it's chalk or crayons or paints, really allow your child to have as much of an experience with art as is possible within your space. It's going to get messy, but the more they have a chance to explore it, the more refined their skills will be and the more they'll understand the boundary of where that material and where that medium should really stay. Now is a great time to get creative. Go ahead and introduce something like stickers into the mix. They can add stickers to their drawings. They can work with some sticker books that allow for matching opportunities. You can lay out a giant sheet of paper, or in this case, I've got some brown bags that I tore up and put down on the floor for a different perspective and vantage point of how to paint and draw. You can also slowly allow your child to experiment with ripping paper apart and working with some glue. Now, if they're still in the mouthing stage and you're afraid that they're going to put the glue in their mouth, you can put some double-sided tape on the paper instead, and that way the child can start to understand the concept of pasting and gluing without it being a risk for them either. It's never too early to introduce art and cultural appreciation, and I'll make a separate video on how to do that later, but we have these simple flashcards from the art museum that I repurposed to do different kind of language activities with. But because these are drawn so very differently from her books, Stella was much more interested in looking at these pictures versus the pictures that I usually present her with. Any kind of Play-Doh, kinetic sand, modeling clay, or homemade Play-Doh is going to be amazing for our kids, especially at this age. Allow them to explore it on their own or with some different utensils like we've got here. This is so great for them to, again, work on their little fingers, make them stronger, use them in different ways. It's a great sensorial exploration. And just like with the building materials, don't be afraid to show your child all the different ways they can manipulate the Play-Doh or the clay in order to create something, in order to roll it out, to make it flat, to scoop it up. They won't know how to use this material if we don't show it to them. And our exploration also continues in the musical sphere. You may notice that your child is starting to experiment with all the different things that they can do with their musical instruments and see how they can work together. And this is where trying to take a step back and understand what your child is doing before reacting becomes very important. Because at first glance, it may look like Stella was being very disrespectful of her materials and just banging things together. But in reality, she was trying to understand what happens when she hits the xylophone with things other than the actual xylophone sticks, including her foot. And along with music obviously comes movement, so whether it's dancing together or dancing on their own, learning that they can rotate their body around and get very dizzy, or joining in on some kind of exercise with the family, you would be surprised at how well our children can actually imitate all the different poses that we do during yoga or during exercise. You can either print out different cards for your child to follow, or if you're doing any kind of exercise or well-being program at home, go ahead and include your child on that one as well. You can also set up obviously different obstacle courses for your child to really practice those gross motor skills, climb all over the place, especially if you're in a colder climate and you're not getting outside nearly as much. They really need a way to burn off that steam right now. If you've got a toddler that isn't always interested in climbing just for the sake of climbing, Stella is one of those toddlers, you can set up a little simple activity that invites them and encourages them to do so. So I've just got a simple ramp and I encourage Stella to just throw the cars down the ramp, see if she can hit any of the magnetiles. And she was continuously having to climb down and climb back up in order to bring the cars back. Now, obviously the best way to get gross motor movement in and really get that energy out is to go outside, whether it's on a nature walk, going to a playground, or simply playing in a sandbox. If it's still warm where you are, definitely utilize as much outside time as you can. But even as the seasons change and it gets colder, rainy, snowy, these are things that are such a burden to us as adults, but there are such wonderful sensorial explorations to our kids. They have never seen this before, or if they have seen it before, they were far too little to really remember it. Going outside to play in the rain and in the snow is going to beat any sensorial bin that you can create. 
Even if you are in a snowy climate like us, simply giving your child a shovel that looks like the one you used to shovel snow can lead to a surprisingly long amount of entertainment. And with the changing seasons come an additional level of practical life activities. Now that we've got all of these different items that we've got to get dressed with, your child may be much more interested in trying to figure out how they can work zippers, how they can put gloves on, how they can put their hat on. So if you see your child gravitating towards the shoe closet or wherever you keep your different items for them to go outside in, don't immediately tell them no. See if they're actually just trying to practice these skills. Another practical life activity that you may introduce if you haven't done so already is cleaning up after their work. Definitely not going to be something that they're going to consistently do, but modeling how to do that and encouraging them to join you or do that on their own, depending on what they'd like to do, definitely going to create a wonderful habit of cleaning up after themselves. I do have a completely separate video of our practical life, day in the life routine, so I'll go ahead and link that to you here as well. Practical life presents so many simple ways for us to practice things like matching when we're matching socks or getting some gross motor movement in if we're working together to, for example, mop the floor. And if you're new to Montessori, this is not forcing the child to do chores. This is simply giving them the same tools that we have and allowing them to join us if they would like to do so. Trust me, I would have been able to mop this floor so much faster if Stella wasn't involved, but she was so fascinated with what I was doing and she really wanted to join in. And the important thing here is she was starting to understand the sequence of what I was doing. She understood that I was going under the furniture. She even understood that I had to move the rug in order to get under it and try to imitate that herself. These are very important skills for children as they move into their preschool years and start to do things like basic math and science. We've talked about peeling clementines before on this channel, but not only is this wonderful, again, fine motor and pincer grasp activities, this is also very simple sorting. We're sorting away the peel from the actual clementine. I think you'd be hard pressed to find a toddler that isn't obsessed with the fridge, so definitely allow your child to help you unpack the groceries whenever possible. This is, again, not only fine motor and gross motor work, this is a lot of sequencing, understanding they have to take some things out of packages before they can put them into the fridge. It's a lot of sorting and understanding where different things go. Amazing language opportunities and a great way for them to interact with foods and expose them to different foods. Practical life activities can also be ones that zero in on specific skills. So working with something like this tweezer variation that really works their fine motor skills and again transferring from one object to another object any kind of water transfer activity. So here we've got this pipette variation in order to transfer the water from the glass over into the pitcher. And I use the pitcher as the other container so she can more easily pour the water back into the cup and continue doing this activity on her own. Pouring water with a funnel creates an extra level of difficulty because now there is an additional step to take care of. You can see because Stella has been pouring water for so long, she's getting really good and very careful about all the different steps that she needs to do. And the reason we put such an emphasis on these kind of small practical life activities is so they can utilize them in their day-to-day -day lives. For example, when they're pouring cereal into a bowl, this is dry pouring. And when we give them milk, this is wet pouring. And don't forget to always present your child with something that will allow them to clean up the spills because this can be the most fun part of any activity. And if it really becomes a big mess, why not make it into a table cleaning activity? This is perhaps a toddler's favorite type of sensory play. Simply playing with a soft sponge, some soapy suds, and just let them have at it. They're going to be so fascinated with being able to manipulate these suds. They're creating different patterns on the table. When they squeeze the sponge, the different bubbles come out. This is a great sensorial exploration. This is a great practical life skill. This is again, great for their hand development as well. And while having a functional kitchen makes the cleanup and in-between process a lot smoother, you can simply put a bowl of water on the floor as well and create an additional little activity for the child to go along with it. And again, the cleanup process can sometimes be the most fun part. I brought this in to actually clean up the floor by myself, but Stella decided to take over and she proceeded to take the towels away from me and run away into the laundry room before I even had a chance to clean up. Now, if you do have snow where you live, you can certainly incorporate it into these practical life activities. So transferring snow from one bowl to another with a scoop. You can also hide the animals in the snow and give your child some utensils to dig them out with. You can also go ahead and add the cars that they use to match with the animals as an extra level of difficulty and an extra step and a purpose of why they're digging through the snow. Not every child is going to be interested or ready for this kind of food prep just yet. This is incredibly supervised at our house, but Stella has been very clingy during dinner time and this is the only thing that has satisfied that need. She really wants to be involved in food prep, but it's also exposed her to a lot of new foods. And of course, we can't forget reading. <laughs> Ba, 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 ba. 
I hope you found these activities helpful and interesting. And as always, I hope you stay safe.